Okay. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, <laughs> greetings from Brussels. Welcome to today's session. Um, I am Vivian Xu, Managing Director of and the co-owner of meeting media company, publisher of Headquarters Magazine. Um, before we dive into our topics, uh, please let me introduce our guest uh, speakers. Um, we are still waiting for Benita to be online. Um, however, we are having Jan Likota with us here. Um, he is currently working in the media department of uh, Visit Brussels, former manager of the Association Bureau at Visit Brussels. For many years, he has been working in the association field, served as an executive board member or a legal advisor. Besides of that, he is actively acting as an event organizer and the trained observer for years. Jan, welcome. Can you Thank please? Thank you, Jan, <laughs> and glad to be joining uh, from Brussels, uh, the Luxembourg Hub. Uh, and I see that our the other speaker has also joined us. So. Yes. Hi, Benita, are you online? I am, yes. Hello. I'm okay. so sorry it took me so long to get here, but now I'm here. Yes, welcome, welcome. So um, Benita Lips, uh, she is the head of the International Association Management Practice at Interrail. As a passionate association executive, nonprofit strategist, and a secret event geek, she oversees event strategy for more than 15 international associations. Thank you for joining us here. Thank you. Um, so we are having a quick 30-minute session today, and uh, I'm going to start my clock running. Um, so we're going to talk about online or turned on. People may question what is this topic about. So um, as the COVID outbreak has pushed all the organizations to hosting online events, a lot of us, even um, community experts, were still in the figuring it out stage, let's say. Some of them may already started um, hosting online events before the outbreak, but it was not their core strategy. So it's still a big shift for most of the organizations, especially for associations. But some people may say, like I heard a lot of my um, association friends were telling me, well, it's so easy to bring people online for webinar. But indeed, I've uh, heard a lot of event organizers have experienced an overwhelming number of online participants. But have you ever questioned behind those numbers, how many of them are actually effectively connected? Uh, meaning not just being online or in front of the screen, but uh, were engaged actively. Um, recently, I talked to some headquarters readers want to get some updates from the association point of view regarding the flourishing online events. And actually, some of them have ex um, expressed their fear to me, uh, meaning they are afraid of losing memberships because of the unfulfillment of the membership benefit. So from this point of view, Benita, um, you as an expert in association management, do you foresee similar problems or have you heard something um, like this? Thank you, Vivian. Yes, so for our association, uh, COVID has been incredibly disruptive. And like everybody, we, we have to start pivoting to digital. But unlike other organizations, uh, associations are completely run by volunteers and that makes this disruption even harder to handle. And just to give you an example, uh, we have medical associations that don't even dare to ask their members to join a board meeting anymore because these are people who are literally fighting every day at the front line to, to deal with COVID uh, and to ask them to make a decision about, uh, I don't know, the next online meeting meeting uh, platform is, is just not the right thing to do. So it's, it's a hard thing uh, to, to tackle for associations. At the same time, we feel that 
the ones who do um, actually have achieved incredible results. So uh, we have some who just thrown themselves into online meetings and who've done a great job. And we've done seen some who invested lots of money and, and it didn't resonate. And to me, the, the difference between the two models is uh, whether they managed to understand member needs and whether they met for a real purpose. Uh, one thing that worked very well for us is roundtables. So just letting members chat with each other to find out their needs. And then digital can really work without high level investment. Um, so just maybe to summarize, I find that that sort of pivoting to, to digital for them is a little bit like, like jumping off a really high diving board right into the pool. And um, if you do a digital event, you know, it might be a bit fearful to start. You go, should I really take the plunge? And once you jump, it seems very easy. Uh, it, you know, technology is there. It's not hard to do. But ultimately, as a medium, it's incredibly unforgiving to every tiny little mistake. So, you know, you make a, you have a disruptive speaker, the sound doesn't work, people disengage. So then you have a very hard landing and it's hard to recover from that. So, yes, uh, digital is a challenge and we're all struggling with it every day. Vivian, we can't hear you at the moment. Oh, yes, so uh, thank you, Benita. And I remember you have mentioned to me, actually one of the associations have told you that they may face in some critical financial crisis in the upcoming years because of the losing of membership. So indeed, this may be a uh, a more serious problem than we thought just by looking at how to host the event or what to do on a webinar is way beyond that. And uh, also, um, since now we are actually facing the second wave of COVID as we are all in confinement again in Europe and uh, people are already getting tired of these digital platforms and uh, by being bombed in their e uh, inbox of uh, millions of invitations. And uh, what do you think at this moment we should do to get our members' attention back um, on those events and uh, to improve the virtual experience? Jan, would you like to share some words with us on this point? Uh, thank you, Vivian, indeed. Uh, so it's an interesting uh, story and the times that we are living in terms of um, evolution of uh, events organization, especially in the associations field. Uh, if we talk about memories, I remember 15 years ago in an association when I was working, we tried to put video conferences and uh, uh, already that style of working and simply there was no, uh, the membership did not endorse it, uh, that way of working, preferring uh, digital, uh, preferring physical meetings. Nonetheless, uh, afterwards, with uh, multiplication of conference calls, there was a learning path and uh, things were evolving. And this is strange because I have seen also very voluntary associations and uh, NGOs or others that were used to work uh, in a distant way, uh, especially for setting up meetings or preparing in between events. So as a working method, the distance uh, channels work very well. But for physical meetings, uh, now we are we have grown with the great availability of physical meetings, possibility of traveling, uh, uh, free uh, movement uh, all over in the last two decades. So people were used to meetings. Uh, and uh, the virtual, well, as Amanda from Cape Town said this morning, so the content for the people in the room and on the Zoom uh, must be good and equivalent um, when it comes to hybrid meetings. But in the virtual per se, what uh, I could observe um, was the multiplication of formats. And the way of engaging has also been evolving in the last months. Uh, first, it was just a gathering way, uh, a way of gathering people. Uh, but suddenly also people started to exploit the tools that were available through digital meetings, uh, whether using polls, uh, breakout rooms. Uh, so adapting, uh, adapting the virtual possibilities to the way of uh, doing uh, things in, in this uh, 
uh, virtual environment. Uh, and that fact also has uh, led people to discover uh, what associations propose. Um, I could, uh, we at the association bro, at the time we were gathering uh, items of what different uh, uh, European associations put in place. For example, the psychology association, how to deal with uh, stress in, in these times, uh, but also then putting on uh, events from a broad spectrum, uh, which were open to the public, because that also we need to make a small difference over there. So what is being open and what is being then uh, focused on, on the membership? Thank you, Jan. <clears throat> yes, and uh, we are, uh, as you have mentioned, indeed, uh, the, the technology platform has already been implemented a lot uh, during the outbreak, first wave of outbreak. But uh, in my opinion, that uh, maybe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because in my opinion, personally, talking about uh, um, associations, I feel they are less open minded. Um, to accept or to dive into the new technology or digital platforms, especially as a lot of scientists predicted that um, COVID may stay with us for an even longer period of time uh, beyond our expectation. So in this case, do you think associations, they are ready or they are open-minded enough to accept uh, um, the new technologies? Yeah. Do you have uh, any um, suggestions? Oh, I, I think they are. And uh, it's also um, partly driven by external circumstances, uh, but also by the membership. Uh, in, in the association uh, world, we, we, may, we, we see a big uh, spectrum of associations, whether they're focused just on advocacy, uh, representing uh, gathering members. Um, but they, they learn quickly. And they also start to experiment uh, with uh, formats of meetings, with uh, how to position the association uh, towards uh, uh, stakeholders, um, international organizations, uh, well, here in Brussels, of course, towards European institutions. Um, but also, they, they, I see that the external parties also now approach associations with uh, uh, products, with uh, digital tools. So. Uh, now we are in this, let's say, matching period uh, where providers, associations learn how to uh, live with each other and also what opportunities exist there. Especially when there was a generation uh, gap in terms of, uh, of, of using tools or habits. Uh, but as we, uh, I know from, for example, ICA, when, when they did uh, so, um, an analysis of how long meetings uh, used to last, so in the 50s it was six days, now there are less than four in the last decade, 3.7, if I remember well. So we see already that um, things, uh, things were evolving in that way. Physical meetings also, uh, they, they were, for some, they were becoming costly. So in the talk that just preceded ours, uh, some people mentioned it. So making this out of the box experiences bring that in value as Malaga just did. And uh, the, the, the positive thing is that we can have the reverse mentoring of uh, some uh, members in associations educating others. And, and also we, we can see uh, that they can provide uh, items which were, let's say, were, were not the headliners of, of what the association has been doing. But now they can bring, let's say, those from the lower priority that were seen as lower priority, now they can put it as a highlight, well, especially if they're linked to uh, sustainable development goals or, or, or digital uh, evolution. Mm, okay. And Benita, do you have anything to share with us? Maybe some of your um, associ international associations that um, are doing similar practices, or do you think that they are still struggling to accept the new technology? I think that associations are still struggling. I wouldn't really attribute it to the fact that there 
are very close-minded. I think one of the big challenges of associations is that they're volunteer-led uh, and that their budgets and their capacities are, are, are severely limited. So um, any any pivot, uh, any change is, is, is hard to implement. And at these times where volunteers are stretched anyway because they tend to have a day job and that day job is already implemented, uh, inf affected by this crisis, um, any pivot, any innovation is, is hard. Um, something that that Jan said, I think, is important. That what what associations need is is not another salesperson that tells them what's the best tool for an online meeting, uh, what platform to use, how to do the best webinar, uh, because we've seen it all. I think we need. Uh, partners who can help us on this path and uh, developing these partnerships now I think is an investment to the future so so that's really an, an an open stretched hand to the meeting industry to go like no I think there's a willingness but it's it's hard to do based on the limited time and resources that we we have but I do think that there's an interest uh, that that associations are daring. Um, we are doing more and more online meetings, and again, once once the leadership dips their their, their little toe in it, um, and they notice how wonderful it can be to to engage with their members live and to get that feedback and to make a real difference, uh, they're very excited to invest more. But we we do need help because we don't have the capacities to do it on our own. Thank you, Benita. Thank you. And uh, we, when we look at the virtual events, um, so there's a word that we talk a lot about uh, legacy uh, in the past, uh, uh, before the outbreak, we talk a lot of legacy of physical events. But now we are also need to focus on the legacy for the virtual events. And in the long run, how can we um, create the legacy of vir virtual events? and meaning constantly keeping our members engaged and, and having their um, regular feedback from the virtual events. This, it, is it a challenge? And uh, Yang, in your opinion, what can we do in, in, in this stage to keep the legacy of virtual events? Well, I'm rather optimistic, and uh, because uh, I have when when we see what has happened in the last six months and the openness of many associations, uh, they were able to first create a momentum of uh, member interest in their association, of openness, uh, so people can uh, first uh, learn that an, an association exists. They were able to pre uh, present programs that were, let's say, taking uh, already some years, and now they were able to show the results in a innovative way um, also create that engagement uh, we have seen that the also the tools that now are being available with the on-demand uh, uh, videos uh, um, and and uh, let's say uh, like, like the Taiwan minister was presenting this morning so the way of transcript in, in a uh, in a new poetry uh, digital poetry format so we can now create things to address a different kind of audience that also has a different kind of um, receiving things of this uh, empathy to, to, to an event or its results. And, and this also uh, we, we may see in uh, what kind of events started to appear. Uh, previously, a book uh, presentations uh, were almost non-existent in a digital way in, a, uh, in a such a wide scale. Now, um, the EU institutions do it. The, uh, for example, the European Parliament Research uh, Service or, or some associations also have been doing that. Uh, uh, whereas previously, th this was, let's say, an area that influencers were doing that. And, and I think that also we don't learn uh, enough from or, of what the self-development um, uh, sector has been doing over the last decade or more. Thank you, Jan. And Benita, do you have anything to comment on this uh, legacy topic? Uh, I, I'd love to, Vivian, and it's, it's it's one of my favorite topics and one of my pet peeves because I think for, for many years we've been doing meetings for meetings' sake, especially in associations where there's a tradition to have certain meetings over and over again just because we've always done it like that. And um, I think that while you can do that uh, with a physical event because it's lovely to meet your friends, it's much harder to do that in a meaningful way online. So to create a legacy to a meeting just because you meet is not enough. So what we've been 
discussing with our associations is to to think about three things, and that's first of all to to listen to their members, to understand why should these people meet? What are their needs? Because that's the only reason and the only way to make a meaningful event. Uh, the second one is to actually define that purpose and to meet around that purpose and to really figure out, is meeting the right way to go? Could you do a video? Could you do an on-demand training? Could you uh, write a blog article? You know, uh, people's time is becoming more and more valuable. So if you want to take people's time, um, just consider the opportunity cost and what people donate you by giving their time. Uh, and then lastly, and maybe most important for legacy is to, to empower them. So to go, yes, there was a meeting. This is the outcome. Who wants to continue? What do we do with these results? How do they impact the future of our association? Um, and again, we've seen over the last month when associations done that well, that um, we had people who who had a membership journey from being a meeting delegate to being part of a member consultation to being part of a panel discussion to then presenting a new idea in the board and launching a new committee. So I think that's what, what really good meeting legacy should look like. And that also then has an impact on member engagement and to staying relevant in these odd COVID times. Totally. I remember the other day we've talked about a smart digital uh, transformation and then I was thinking out loud that if it's possible that we could, uh, um, it's actually talking about online community like building up a platform like a association Facebook or association um, Instagram just for their members to have them all engaged in a very easy accessible and then um, an uh, easy managing way because if you make it too complicated also member will lose their patience to to get engaged on this uh, event and uh, so to summarize what we have talked about here is when we look at the point of legacy we have to think beyond the webinar or just a simple event because before the event, you may think about uh, how to contact people, certain communication, marketing, and the PR team need to be dedicated, also technicians. And while the event, while the event is going on, we need to pay attention to the engagement of uh, audience and uh, um, uh, virtual experiences. And afterwards, we need to keep on tracking about the feedback and the survey, and then, Based on that, we will be able to create another Congress based on the members' needs. Also, of course, the uh, budget is another very important uh, point from association's point of view. And the uh, smart digital transformation should also be in implemented into the strategy. And uh, as Yang has mentioned, associations should also engage more young generations as they are going to be the experts in the modern technologies in the future. Um, I remember yesterday, there's uh, one speaker talked about a future meeting space area. That is something really um, fantastic to think because uh, um, perhaps this is something more insightful for uh, meeting venues um, for, um, but uh, for that associations also need to adapt themselves to this new technology and the new venue. And moreover, we talked about building an online community, uh, which means it, it has to be like a habit uh, for members to attend online events and to make them feel comfortable to sit in front of the camera and talk. Uh, just like people got the habit of taking a coffee in the morning and uh, doing some meditation before going to the bed. So it's just a matter of building up this habit but by helping, but how association could help their members to build up this habit, this may require the association to set up a certain communication strategy and uh, to really um, guide the uh, members to, to be online and to get used to it. But here we need to keep in mind that uh, we are actually building, not building a house here, we are growing a tree, that means when you, um, uh, when you start the online events, 
you should not have a blueprint of what, what it will look like in the future um, from the day one, but actually just do it and bring people online, take it easy, and over the time, your community will organically find its form. And uh, I think organically, it's a very important word that uh, Benita, the other day you have uh, commented that uh, it's uh, because it's organic. So you, you do not need to, to use much fertilizer to, to make it grow. It's naturally coming up and people feel comfortable um, to gather together here. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, your, for your knowledge and for your input. Um, I think we are still having three minutes. Maybe yeah. we can answer some Q&A live. Can we bring some questions online? Emily? And maybe while we wait on the questions, uh, Vivian, I just want to say I love your tree metaphor. I think it's it, it's wonderful. And uh, the, the fact that we're all tinkering and that we're all experimenting should be uh, an opportunity for us to, 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 to feel a bit fear because we don't have to get it perfect we just have to have to try um, and I think as for associations that's particularly difficult because we have rules and regulations in terms of references uh, but 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 yeah I think this is this is the right mindset to to survive this crisis and to excel at digital events yeah actually the other day I read something um, talking about uh, how to start or kick off your webinar or online events people indeed were very scared of uh, making mistakes yeah. But actually, you should not, because uh, people may be more tolerant. And then, Jan, the other day you've mentioned that you said after after attending, uh, you have noticed a survey or something. After attending the uh, events, you may notice people they they start to feel more comfortable to talk in social media or to share their uh, comments. Indeed, that is the case, and. Uh... I have seen that in in uh, also the, the fact that you can uh, continue the discussion uh, via new channels and uh, that also may, may, makes then the, the sense of community uh, whether it is in an association or whether it is an outcome of an event and and when I see here um, uh, a question related to the title of our event uh, uh, online or turned on well that's the case so. If, if we, let's say, uh, have a comic uh, relationship to how we look at TV with zapping on channels, well, I hope that this won't appear with uh, association meetings uh, that uh, could be in um, appearing uh, as a TV series. Uh, so uh, I think we can learn uh, more from uh, from this engagement, but also don't uh, also let's realize uh, how other sectors have been uh, doing uh, recently and learn from them, whether it is music uh, um, and also the, the sense okay. of community yeah, is important to us. So. I have some connection problem. And I think we. Yes, um, I actually saw a quick question here. Maybe we can go through one question and then we finish our session. Can you hear me well? Yes. OK, so it's uh, what engagement opportunities do you find important when attending an online event? Benita? Uh, that, that that's a great question. I think it depends a little bit on on culture and seniority and uh, sector, but generally, I think um, and, and for me, for an online event to be meaningful, I need to have a chance to interact with the speakers because otherwise I could watch a recording. So um, yeah. what we're doing now, so, so there are, there is a question and we can respond. I think that's that, that, that's the key for me for for good engagement. And I think um, an exit poll, so I can I can give I can give some response afterwards and getting the response of the poll sent to me. Those would be sort of the the, the three key things that I would expect. As, as basic engagement from an online event. Yes, thank you. Jan, do you have any? Well, yes, uh, guaranteeing the continuity. And uh, so keep keep the dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you again, Jan and Benita. And uh, thank you for the audience across the broad for joining us online. I think it has been a great session. And uh, I would like to dedicate a special thank you to the Luxembourg team on site for keeping everything under control. It worked out greatly. Thank you very much. And uh, stay safe, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah, see you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.